All right, welcome to my channel and to this video. I know why you're here. You want to know if this Ultra Color Plus from Mapai or Mapay or however you say it works. Uh, there are a lot of online reviews out there saying this stuff is fast drying, which it is, but it basically turns into a block of cement after five minutes, rendering it completely useless and a waste of your money. So we're going to put this stuff to the test. I will show you a little bit about how to apply it in a reasonable way and some conditions that you want to create to help the process go a little better. Uh, and we're ultimately, ultimately going to be deciding, hey, is this stuff worth it? Or should you stick with something like Caracolor or something else? Now, here are the instructions. I'll pop a link down in the description below if you want to read those in more detail or if you're interested in actually purchasing this. I got it uh, actually at Lowe's, but it's available online at Amazon, for example. And I made another video on the testing of the color to make sure that once it's dried, uh, it matches the color label on the bag. So you can search for that in my channel and check that video out if you are interested. But definitely you want to make a small batch here. This is what you're looking at to test it first to make sure before you invest a lot of time and potentially create a disaster situation of it drying in a different color. Um, you want to make sure you test it and make sure that your testing conditions match your actual application conditions, right? In this video, we'll be applying it to a, an alcove, alcove shower that uh, basically a project that I am have recently undertaken. And I'm gonna make sure the temperature uh, testing is pretty darn close to what the temperature is during application like I said. So if I test it at 70 degrees, when I apply it in my bathroom, in my shower, I'm gonna make sure the ambient temperature is about 70 degrees. And overall, I am happy with the color it dried, long story short here, the testing, it dried the color that I wanted it to, and I even sealed it, and it's a perfect match. So I know that this is the stuff that I want to go with. Here is a look at the shower. The tiling is up, and I'm ready to grout. So you're gonna go along with me and grout. We're not gonna do, obviously, the entire project. I'll fast forward and skip around and stuff, but. First thing we're gonna to wanna to do is get your spacers out of there if you still have spacers in there. And if you have any dried uh, thin set left over from your tiling, make sure that is cleaned up. Obviously the smart person wipes this stuff off when it's still wet. However, the smarter person, or less smart, however you wanna put it, <laughs> uses a wet cloth and just kind of rubs that off. Even if it's days dry, it should rub off reasonably well. Use a straight edge razor blade or a utility knife there to kind of go along and get rid of some of those. It's not super fun if you have, you know, lots of thin set left over in there, but a really important part of the step, you have to make sure none of that thin set is sticking out because when you grout, you're gonna see little white pieces or gray pieces of cement thin set protruding from your grout line. You don't want that. And then of course, run your shop vac or vacuum cleaner through those to get up all that dust. That's gonna affect the seal or the bond of your grout in those spaces. And don't forget to adequately protect your shower base or whatever your floor situation might be. And we're gonna need a sponge, a brand new sponge. Don't use a crappy old one. A float and a little scrubber. It's got a soft abrasive on the end of it to get, so help get some of that haze off later. And here is the grout. Again, I'll pop links down below in the description for all this stuff that you might need to pick up. Now I opted for the 10 pound bag as opposed to the 25 pound bag. Uh, I'm doing an alcove 60 inch by 36 inch deep uh, shower and 12, in a, 12 inch by 24 inch tiles uh, with approximately 1 8th inch gap. So a 10 pound bag is plenty more than enough for the singular job. Now, in terms of mixing this stuff, you can see here I'm writing down a formula. Um, the instructions happen to call 1 to 1.1 quarts of water for a 10 pound bag. Now, I'm not interested in mixing the entire bag at one time. I like to work, especially with this stuff being claimed as you know, fast setting. I don't want to mix the whole bag, especially this is the first time I've used this stuff. I want to work with small batches. And so I'm just calculating for all those uh, viewers out there who might be interested in this specific calculation, a more controlled approach. Here is basically the ratio of water to cement mix or grout. 
Uh, so you could add it, you know, just like this. However, I'm more of a texture kind of guy when I work with grout. I have grouted and also, you know, thin set, similar approach to that in terms of consistency. You want it to basically look like peanut butter and feel like peanut butter. I like to apply the grout first or put the grout in first and then add water because um, if you do the opposite, you might be in a situation where you put in too much water and then you might not have enough grout, right? Uh, you'll find that it takes just a little bit of water, obviously less water to powder ratio, right? A little bit of water will actually make the consistency that you want. And so you can really control it by adding the powder first Start with a couple of uh, cups, a couple of big scoops, and then add water. And I didn't really pay attention to how much water went in there because, again, I'm, I'm looking at it and I'm looking at texture. And I'll poke my finger down there and feel for the texture. So you'll get a couple shots later in the video of what the texture, in my opinion, should look and feel like. You don't want it to be too watery. That will create a different color when it dries and also affect the strength. But you want it to, like I said, kind of be like peanut butter. So the instructions tell you how long you should mix it for. I mix it for a good two or three minutes with my heavy duty mixer. And then you can take your float and just kind of feel what it what it looks like and what it so that's like a, a pretty good consistency, I would say. You want it to slide. It shouldn't be clumpy at all, but it shouldn't fall off your float. Alright, so I'm gonna start in an inconspicuous or less conspicuous area of the shower. In other words, when you first come in, it'll be kind of the back left as opposed to the first thing you see. I wanted to start there in case I mess things up. You know, if this stuff indeed dries rapidly fast and I'm stuck with grout that's like caked onto the tile or something. I didn't really know what to expect. I'm taking a risk here. Now here's the deal with this stuff. This stuff got a lot of bad reviews online turning to cement so quickly and unusable. But I found with my ambient temperature in my house set at around 70 degrees, that means my thermostat was at about 65, maybe 64. So I turned down the heat just a, a little bit. I'm on the second floor of the house doing the shower job. So there's a differential temperature differential there of three to four degrees. So we're just at, I would estimate a little bit below 70 degrees. Now I understand that you might be in a place like Florida or California where, or maybe you're working outside where you can't control the temperature. Um, if it's summer, if it's hot, crank the AC, try to drop that temperature as low as possible because I found, and the instructions kind of back this up, the instructions do say the warmer the temperature, or they imply the warmer the temperature, the faster this stuff sets. And I found that working with this stuff even with my small batches, I could have made much larger batches at 70 degrees or slightly less than. This stuff went on just like other grout did. Caracolor or maybe some other brand. In other words, a non-rapid setting grout. I found this stuff really pleasurable to work with. Moral of the story here. And so the rest of the video, you're going to see me apply it. It's going to go on like regular grout. It's going to wipe off like regular grout. Uh, I think with the temperature being around 70 degrees, you don't have to have that panic mode of it's setting too fast. Do I need to, what? I mean, you obviously, if you have two people, great. One person can follow up and wipe as you're grouting. But I don't know if you have to panic. I mean, yeah, you don't want it to sit for too long, right? You want it to kind of set. And I let everything kind of sit for, you know, a few minutes. And then I wiped most of that gray excess stuff off and you'll see me do that here in a second let's fast forward a little bit so you work it in the grout lines or the gaps just like you would any other grout and then you take a wet damp sponge and you wipe it in diagonal strokes you don't want to pull all that grout out right so look at my technique here and i am flipping the sponge over to try to get a clean side of the sponge for each pass or two because I want to try to lift up as much of that excess as possible. And I definitely don't want to smear it around all the other nice white parts if I can avoid it of the tile. So this is kind of my technique here. Again, just after a couple of minutes, this stuff, it's not set, but it doesn't pull out super easily from the gaps, which I really 
really appreciated. And so, you know, I kind of went a few lines like this at a time. And then I just kind of let it sit for a little bit. So maybe five more minutes while I worked on and continued on to the next grout line. So that was after five minutes. This stuff is still creamy peanut butter like it's not hardening at all. And again, I attribute that to the ambient temperature that I'm working in. So a close up first person view here of the application. If you've not applied grout before, you definitely want to check out the stroke technique there. And you want to kind of force it in to the gap and then kind of wipe and make your float angle out a little bit, just like that. So you kind of push it in there and then diagonally swipe was my preferred. And you, you should kind of, you can kind of look to the left there, you know, and actually see it kind of go into the gap, right? In the unclosed area, not unlike you would do with your thumb. And you'll find a lot goes, a little goes a long way. So this was, this was a real pleasure to work with. It applies really easily. I always say that grouting and actually getting the grout into the gaps is the easy part of grouting and kind of the fun part too. The more difficult part is the sponge work, right? Getting it all smooth, getting all those holes filled, making it look professional and finished. And at the same time, getting all that haze and all that excess stuff off. So I'll show you how to do that shortly. But here's an up close look at, now this is the rain color. I don't know if you saw that earlier. It's got a little bit of blue in it and every now and again you'll see a little blue indigo kind of speck that actually smears and wipes indigo. And you're like, what is this? This is wrong. This is not, don't worry. They put a little bit of blue in there. It's a rain color. Um, and I think it makes it a really beautiful color, but you just have to wipe away if you do get some of those blue specks. I didn't get any footage of that, but um, in the my whole job, I probably saw three blue blue specks. So something you know along the Mapai brand mixing process, um, they had some blue. Whatever blue they put in there didn't blend up all the way. So all right, so here we are I'm working on the other wall as well. And I think we're still on the original batch. We're getting a little low here. But again, it's not hardening up at all. Very, very impressed and pleased with this stuff. This stuff has superior technology compared to regular grout for reasons I don't fully understand, but it's rapid setting. You're not, you're, you don't have to seal it when it's, um, when it's applied. You can if you want, and I will, because I'm that kind of person. I want to overkill it a little bit, but you don't have to, as stated on the instructions. So that's nice. And it works in 1 16th inch gap, gaps in your tile all the way up to, I think they say, a qu three quarters of an inch or a half an inch or something ridiculous like that. So it um, could be sanded or, or kind of unsanded. That notion goes out the window when you're dealing with this stuff, which is why it's part of the allure of, of you know wanting to buy this stuff, despite it being, quote, rapid setting. So just some more views here of the application. With my sponge, I'm just trying to work it, get it to that nice, clean, finished look. And again, it, it didn't thick, hardly even thicken up at all for me, or harden up at all. So again, it was just great. My, my blood pressure went down considerably once I realized, hey, this stuff is not, it's not setting um, in five minutes, right? Obviously, there might be some situations where you do want a rapid setting. That's why you bought it, right? You have two people, you're ready to rock, you need foot traffic on it, like within three hours or whatever. Like, okay, great, then make sure your temperature's turned up a little bit. But I'm saying if the, you know, you're a homeowner and you've got a little bit of time and um, you're kind of doing this by yourself and you can control the temperature, then this is how you do it, all the way. 
Appreciate you journeying along with me. If you have not visited this channel before, be sure to subscribe. I do put out regular do-it-yourself home project videos. Regular meaning I try to do it weekly depending on life and whatnot. And I also do product reviews on tools and lots of other things, cool things around the home. So again, subscribe. Now here's another technique with the sponge. Try not to, try to keep that sponge on, keep a wet side, clean side, keep it on the tile. Don't drag it across the tile grout. You don't want to smear it. There's another look at the consistency. That's the end of that first batch. And like you, like you can see here, I've done quite a bit. Started with that left wall and then that full right wall. Now I'll move on to the middle wall here. And check out my finger. It's got a little bit of haze left over, just like other grout would. So another little tip, if you have a wet washcloth, damp, keep it clean side. And do a couple passes just on the tile. Be careful not that that paper towel does not hit that grout mark. It does harden, harden up pretty well, um, but you don't want to, if you touch it, it'll definitely smear. Right, it shouldn't pull any of the grout out of the gap, but um, and then you can just throw that paper towel away as opposed to dunking the sponge and getting it wet again, and you'll be still be transferring some of that grout back onto the tile. So a paper towel actually, several paper towels, right, um, can actually I think help that. Check out the vertical technique there. Again, I'm not a pro, but grouting's pretty simple, and I really like it really fun. The uh, sponge work, not so much. Getting up all that haze, not so much, but the application of the grout is pretty cool. Um, if you do have one of these little scrubbers, uh, that can help remove some of the, the haze after you've, you know, let it sit for 10 or 15 minutes or so. Uh, again, making sure that that edge doesn't hit the grout line. And once your grout starts to really harden up, then you can be a little more aggressive on the corners or the edges of the tile and try to get some of that haze up. I have the advantage of having kind of white tiles, so the haze isn't as noticeable. But if you touch your finger, you can kind of see it. Well, that looks pretty good, actually. So the idea, of course, is to get rid of that. Wipe it with enough with a sponge, a clean sponge, a wet sponge, or a paper towel till that haze is gone. Now this is the dry. You can see it turning a really nice stainless steel or rain color, just like the instructions indicate. Um, it definitely turns lighter gray. So it applies pretty dark like this, and then it, and that's the testing process, right? Like I knew exactly what color it was going to go on. I knew exactly what color it was going to dry. Now this is the vertical seam in the corner, kind of tough to get in there, but I found that going at it perpendicularly to the line works really well and you can use your finger of course to kind of work, work it in there. Again, you want it to not just cover the surface, you want it to get back in there a little bit and then cover the surface, if that makes sense. So make sure grout pushes back into the seam it's going to help create a nice bond, a nice seal. I mean, water does does kind of grout is not completely waterproof. Water will get back there. That's why you red guard everything or water waterproof. I put up a sheet of polyurethane behind your cement backer board, right? The assumption that that's an entry point for water possibly over time or steam, right? But you do want to make it thick, as thick as possible, I think. And then you, if you are, you know, I did my horizontal, my, my walls one day, and then the next day I came back and did the, the corner seams, and you can kind of blend it in there. Now, if you have a mosaic backsplash on a shower niche, for example, uh, pretty, pretty similar process, put it on with your float. And the extra challenge here is not as much surface tile or tile surface, I, I, should, I should say, a lot more grout lines to deal with. So you're going to want to let that set. You can obviously go at it pretty quickly with a wet sponge to get some of that. Oh, there's some holes there, so I go back and fill that in. You can get your wet sponge and get rid of that excess as much as possible. 
And again, the grout does not pull up very easily, so I appreciate that. I've worked with some grout before that you take that sponge and you go the wrong way and it just pulls the whole thing up. So, so this is kind of what the first pass looks like on a mosaic backsplash. Just trying to get all that excess stuff off and making sure, and I was pretty liberal with my application of the grout on this. I wanted to make sure that stuff was pushed in there as far as possible. I mean, it's the opposite side of the shower head, so it's not going to get sprayed on too much, but still. More importantly, you want it to just look nice, right? <laughs> now, the color of my mosaic backsplash there, the, the gray, it actually, that's, it's hard to discern. Is that grout or is it the pattern of the tile? <laughs> but you might not have that problem. Anyway, speed this up here. And you can let that set for a good 10, 15, 20 minutes and then come back and get the rest of it off. And you'll notice some streaks or some, some water stains as you wipe. Again, use that edge, that nice straight edge of a paper towel and just do several passes there. Again, making sure that doesn't hit the grout line and disrupting that grout line that you just put. Otherwise, you'll have to go back over it with the wet sponge. You don't want your sponge to be too wet now. Just nice and damp. If it's pooling, that's a problem. And I've got these Schluter kind of finished edges here, these trim edges. And I am grouting between the tile and those also. And you don't want to let that stuff sit on the Schluter trim so get that stuff wiped off pretty quickly and here I am sealing it again the instructions don't say you have to seal it but they do say you can seal it and I'm doing that with a paintbrush and I'll do a couple applications tedious long work but it actually goes pretty quickly it's not too not too bad that's in slow-mo so it looks really slow and long but you can move pretty quickly all right and that is it we will stop the video there. So overall, this grout is not as scary as it seems. I highly recommend it, actually. Superior technology, and it goes on just like any other grout as long as you keep that temperature down to around 70 degrees. Or maybe warmer, maybe higher. Test it out first and see what you think. Thanks so much.